Here we are at the Friday 13th Part 3 screening in 3D with the 3D glasses. Man's shiny six. Got Rick right over there. <laughs> well, are you excited? Yeah. <laughs> 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 The 3D looks amazing, but let's take ourselves back to 1982 when there was no THX sound, when there was no stadium seating, when there was no internet buzz saying the next sequel is going to suck and let's go boycott it, <laughs> and when they said that there was only smoking permitted in the lobby. I'm going to get the movie started in a minute, but I want to thank a few special people, Rachel Belofsky of Screen Fest for letting us know. guys who created all the visuals and 3D effects for this film who are here tonight, and they generously, do generously donated all of these glasses that you're wearing, awesome. and uh, they also brought the original lenses that projected this film, which was a very unique format for its time. And their names are Marty, Singa, and Neil Reed. to uh, Steve Miner, the director, and Mike Mathis, the director and producer and a very great a living legend and a modern horror icon with Jason Voorhees. Uh, Larry Zerner, who is my very good Shall friend, is really the inspiration. <laughs> which I think you'll understand once you see it <laughs> and then see what it looks like today. <laughs> and actually, I, have to say, I do have to say, without Larry... Hey, Larry. Uh, <laughs> Larry! Without Larry, Jason probably never would have found that hockey mask. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a trademark hockey mask, and in case any of you have any trademark or copyright issues, you may want to visit www.zernerlaw.com with the hockey mask. <laughs> Who's going to take that one? Hold it. Do you want the mic? Yes. Mike. 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 <laughs> the real story about how the hockey mask came about was I'm from Buffalo, New York, and Frank... Oh, shit, do I really have to sit here? <laughs> <laughs> All right, how the hockey mask came about. I'm from Buffalo, New York, and Frank Mancuso was my next door neighbor in Buffalo, New York. And we were hockey fanatics. And whenever the Sabres came to town, we used to invite them to Paramount Pictures. And uh, we played together, and we had a Paramount hockey team. And the day that the makeup test came about, uh, we really didn't know what Jason should really look like, but we had to come up with some kind of a makeup test in 3D. And I had my hockey mask there, and I just said, why don't we put it on just for the test and see what it looks like. And I only wish that I had registered the hockey mask, because <laughs> that's all I see. So um, it's because I love hockey. And somebody said, if I came from Detroit, Jason would probably be wearing a basketball in his head. So. <laughs> <laughs> So, Larry, how did you land the role of, as a dentist, Shelley Finkelstein? <laughs> <laughs> and tell us what you're up to today. Uh, I, well, I, did, I literally got this role. I was, I was standing on a street corner in Westwood, handing out tickets to the road, uh, screening of The Road Warrior. And uh, these people came up to me and said, are you an actor? And I was like a struggling actor, like everyone in L.A., you know, 18. And, and, and I go, yeah, I'm an actor. And they go, we wrote this movie, and we think you'd be perfect for it. <laughs> <laughs> that was Marty Kitcher and Kara Watson. They wrote the movie. They like, it was like geeky, fro, fat, <laughs> geek, you. <laughs> and we know she was only ten. <laughs> ten going on eleven. I was almost eleven. <laughs> 
Well, first off, I have to say I haven't seen this movie in 25 years. First time in 25 years. And you know, I, I can't imagine why I gave up my acting career. <laughs> <laughs> I had so much potential. Um, I um, actually worked, I'm in a, from a showbiz family, and I did my first commercial at two and um, worked my entire childhood. And I was a student at UCLA at 10. <laughs> and um, my mother was my agent and said, hey, they're casting a, a movie. Why don't you go, oh, mom, I'm done. I'm, I'm in college. No, no, you should go. Well, I went and I got it. And it was so much fun. It was just a blast making the movie. And it was really the last thing I did um, as a child actress. And I went to college and got a degree in journalism, and I've been a broadcast journalist ever since. <laughs> oh, the test scene. That was amazing. That was incredible. Um, first of all, they had to um, create a um, replica of my upper torso, which was uh, <laughs> kind of bizarre. <laughs> and um, it took, because it's 3D, it took hours to film that one little three second shot, hours to set up the lighting and the makeup, and they had to do the makeup just right. Um, Excuse me, you were worth it. Oh, <laughs> thank you. They um, yep. attached the um, replica torso to my neck and they didn't want the line to show. Anyways, it was it took hours and hours and it was it was uh, quite quite the scene. It was it was actually fun. You have no idea what it felt like lying underneath a hammock. No. <laughs> Shooting the scene of it going through the window, I was very I'm glad I was not a stuntman on that night. <laughs> because at that point, the, the, my character was dead, so he had to be projected through the window, so they had this, this air ramp to launch a person. So they bring the stunt guy out, and they pull the, the window out of the frame, so it's an open frame, but they keep, and he keeps hitting high, and he gets close. <laughs> <laughs> this was way before I was a chiropractor. <laughs> they cannot have paid they could not have paid me enough. They should, I mean, whatever they paid that guy wasn't enough. So then I just went away with the floor. Brooker. I've told this story a million times, so people have heard this, but how I ended up getting the role, um, a friend of mine had been on the casting call and said, oh, you got to go meet these casting directors. Maybe even Bill Ryder, they're just the most nicest guys, which are always the case. And so I went in and uh, I read for actually the part of um, uh, <laughs> 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 I went into that role and they go, no, no, you're not right for that role at all, but you're absolutely right for the lead. Can you come back and meet the producer and the director? And as I'm walking out, um, they said, by the way, you know, this guy, he lives up in the, up in the mountains, he's like a carpenter or whatever, so don't wear nice clothes, you know? Because everybody had been coming in in slacks and so forth. And so I came in the next day and I had work boots and blue jeans and a two jacket and I carried a couple two by fours and a skill saw. And I walked in. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve Miner and Frank Mancuso Jr. were there. And they just loved it. They just ate it up. And so then a little few minutes later, they're going, By the way, have you seen part one or part two? And I go, No, I'm not really into that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and they look at each other and go, I just started laughing. You know? yeah, it's, it's kind of what, if anything, did Steve Miner tell you that he was looking for? Uh, Steve Miner told me absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> he said to me, do never come up to me and ask me what your motivation is for this scene because you have no motivation. <laughs> you are just a senseless killer. And you are like uh, Jaws. You have no feelings, no meanings, no nothing. You just go out and kill. <laughs> and seriously, I mean, that's what he told me. And um, uh, studying acting most of my life and growing up in theater and, and whatever, whatever, uh, I didn't necessarily buy that. And I tried to put a um, a meaning and a character to the character. Um, and I honestly believe that you don't have to be, um, how do I explain this? You know, I, I was the pot smoke. Come on. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Think. Um, you don't have to talk to be an actor. You know? Um, 
you can walk and you can and move and you can still be an actor. You don't have to talk to be an actor. And I think that's what I brought to the role. And I think that's what made uh, Jason Jason. And um, uh, after all the episodes that we've had since then, um, people run back and they go, wait a second, Friday the 13th part 3 was the scariest one ever. And thanks to Steve Miner, thanks to our wonderful cast here. Come on, applause. <laughs>